A story that's lighting up the political battlefield today is the renaming by the Modi government of the Nehru Memorial Museum and Library in the national capital. A very prestigious establishment. The Congress is calling it petty politics. The Modi government says this is just justice for all prime ministers. So we're going to talk about it here on Democratic Newsroom. Rajdeep is here with me. Gaurav is here with me. Let's find out what they think. Rajdeep, what do you think? The BJP says, why only Nehru? Let it be about all prime ministers. Minister, the Congress says, while that is fine, it is the intention behind it which stinks. Look, I was interestingly at the Nehru Memorial only last week at a book function. And uh, as I said, I called it the Nehru Memorial almost instinctively there. And I actually spent some time looking at the Pradhan Mantri Sangrale, which I think is a great idea. You know, why should every Indian Prime Minister not be celebrated or at least uh, discovered by next generation? No problem with Pradhan Mantri Sangrale. But, you know, the building, the iconic building itself is known as the Nehru Memorial and Library. In an ideal world, you could have both coexist. You have the Pradhan Mantri Sangrale and you have the Nehru, Nehru Memorial Museum and Library. Why should it be always mutually exclusive? Uh, you have, for example, in Motera, the Narendra Modi Stadium that's located within the Sardar Patel Sports Complex. I, I, I just wish these things could be done without acrimony. There are, you know, there's enough of acrimony and enough of issues that really should seriously engage our politicians more than these renaming games. Renaming, renaming games, frankly, I find uh, uh, a, a bit uh, just not uh, important enough. Okay. Gaurav, what do you think? I mean, I think Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru deserves his place in history, considering he was independent India's first Prime Minister, was Prime Minister from 1947 till 64. Uh, but he wasn't India's only Prime Minister. Uh, and, uh, well, yes, 17 years, he played a very critical role. The remaining 60 years, you had 13 other Prime Ministers, and the nation must know about all the 14 Prime Ministers so far and their contribution in building India. India wasn't built by any one man. So I think it's very, very petty. Somebody should have an issue uh, if, it's, if it's called Pradhan Mantri Sangrahale. Of course, Nehru's legacy is there at Murti Bhavan. Uh, you know, the way he lived, the way he worked, his artifacts, they remain there. But then India wasn't built by one man. The, the BJP sees it as a pattern, Rajdeep. That's the reason why the politics is taking place. The BJP says this is not the first time that, uh, you know, attempts have been made to shake the Nehru legacy or erase his name or attack him in parliament. So they say that it's the a Congress. pattern. The Congress says it's a pattern. Yeah, you know, it is. I mean, let's be honest. You know, over the, over the last few years since Mr. Modi has taken over, uh, there's been a sense that Nehru's legacy has been under attack. Uh, we've seen that in, in various statements that have been made at different times about Prime Minister Nehru. So in the backdrop of that, the renaming acquires a political edge. In an ideal world, as I said, I believe the Nehru Memorial and Museum with all the artifacts and the lives and times of uh, Jawaharlal Nehru should also coexist with, uh, with the life and times of all of India's Prime Ministers. Uh, the name itself, as someone who's been visiting the library over the years, for, I, I will always instinctively call it the Nehru Memorial Museum. Maybe the next generation will call it Pradhan Mantri Sangrale. Uh, to me, Jawala Nehru's role and contribution cannot be erased by simply changing a name. He, his contribution is there. And I think we should recognize that, celebrate it, rather than seek to denigrate, demonize, or get him tied up into these legacy wars. Mm. You see, the problem is successive generations uh, of the Congress and BJP seem to be engaging in a legacy war in the kind that during Nehru's time didn't exist. You know, Nehru was the one who promoted Atal Bihari Vajpayee. Today we are doing this uh, democratic newsroom on uh, Vajpayee's Punya Titi. There is a, you know, excellent uh, uh, anecdote about how Mr. Modi tells M.K. Rasgotra, uh, who eventually became former foreign secretary when uh, 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 Mr. Vajpayee was going to uh, America, that please look after him, show him around, let the world know that this is a you know, new young leader. That's the spirit that used to exist in the 1950s and 60s. In the 2023s, even naming, renaming gets caught in all kinds of political tangles. You know, Jawaharlal Nehru, all said and done, will be seen as India's first prime minister. You cannot change history. You can change a name, 
but you cannot change history. Okay, you can change the name, but you can't change history. The Congress, you know, if, if we come down to the lowest level of the politics, the Congress finds itself on a bit of a sticky wicket, you know, given its own treatment of prime ministers like uh, P.V. Narasimha Rao and others. And that's also used as a handle to attack the Congress, saying, who are you to, you know, lecture about the legacies of prime ministers when someone as important as a P.V. Narasimha Rao didn't get his due? Well, uh, you know, Rajdeep knows better. Uh, it's been reported on ground. It was covered by television cameras. Uh, when uh, P. V. Narsimha Rao's mortal remains were coming into the Congress Party headquarters, Rajdeep can tell us better how even that wasn't permitted. This country wasn't built, as uh, several political parties and leaders say, either by one individual or by one family. Uh, there was contribution of everybody. And, you know, when we talk about history, history will be very impartial in judging facts. Now, when you look at facts, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru also became Prime Minister of India. When you talk about democracy, not through a democratic process. Mm. 12 or 15 Congress committees had nominated Sardar Ballabhai Patel. That's a fact. The other three abstained. So Sardar Patel should have actually been independent India's uh, first Prime Minister. That did not happen. Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru became independent India's first Prime Minister. His contribution, well, his great contribution also comes, uh, you know, with, with, as the Prime Minister uh, has pointed out, or as the Home Minister and others have pointed out, Kashmir, uh, there's been an issue. There's been an issue with China, both issues that the country was grappling with for quite some time. So look at it impartially. Study it study it independently and, and judge everyone by their work, not by the surround sound. You know, let, let me finally then dispute here with my friend, uh, Mr. Savan, because the fact is that whether it was Nehru or Patel is a choice the Congress had to make. You see, it's, it's the parties. So, so Mahatma Gandhi, others played that role. Now, 75 years later, are you going to deny Mr. Nehru his place because in 1947, uh, the Congress party chose Nehru over Patel, even though Sir, Patel, no, 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 Nehru, was, Nehru was the most, Nehru was uh, arguably the most popular leader of the masses at the time. Sardar Patel was arguably the most popular leader within the Congress party. These are decisions taken by the party itself. Are we going to argue with them 75 years later? It is possible that if you had an election in 1996, L.K. Advani would have got more votes within the BJP than Atal Bihari Vajpayee. But Vajpayee was the more popular mass leader, became prime minister. Is, are these the battles that we are going to fight in 2023 while deciding, you know, Nehru's legacy? Uh, the problem is, because Parivar Vaad, has become such a catchy slogan and a way to attack the Congress party. And the Congress party has much to answer on that. Therefore, you drag Nehru into the debate. You drag his legacy into the debate. I mean, you know, you, I, I think you, you're doing injustice, in my view, by dragging these great leaders into debates of this kind. I've seen debates between Nehru and Bose. You know, uh, uh, you know trying to pit Nehru versus Bose, for God's sake. You know, Bose, whatever else he was, was certainly, you know, he and Nehru, I, I can give you a number of quotes where Bose and Nehru had enormous respect for each other. Sir? Now, come on, you know, you're going to, you're trying to use history to settle political scores today. And I think that's dangerous. Okay. I think these great leaders should be left to the times in which we live. And we should assess them dispassionately. I agree with that. Which but is all that I was doing. No, you know, no, which is, that no, it should have been Patel. Why? Why no, should I it? I didn't say it should have been. All I said was, when you, if when you talk about democracy, yes. and when you talk about how a democratic leader is elected, 12 or 15 state committees had nominated Sardar Ballabhai yes. Patel uh, to be party president and consequently prime minister. The other three had abstained. So when you talk about, uh, you know, popular leader, mass leader, of course, uh, there are also those. I mean, when you talk about anecdotal uh, in, uh, information, there are those who have argued that perhaps uh, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru would have made a great foreign minister and Sardar Patel would have made a great prime minister. We do not know. But, you know, at that Pradhan Mantri Sangrahalai and at that Pradhan Mantri uh, library, there will be scholars who will research and perhaps come up with more papers. Hey, so it's a Pradhan Mantri Sangrahalai. I agree. I've said there should be a Pradhan Mantri Sangrahalai, but the BJP certainly has no role to play in that debate between Patel and Nehru. That was a debate that took place within the Congress party. The problem is everyone, and Patel, lifelong congressman, who today is being appropriated by the BJP, Bose, lifelong secularist of the hardest quality, a secular fundamentalist in today's, uh, in today's context, you are trying to appropriate him and you are playing politics over it. I mean, for God's sake, this is a place for scholars. Ideally, the Nehru Museum and Library is a place for, great, uh, for scholars to go and do 
find scholarship, look back at archival material. The library, the Sangrale, the museum of the prime minister should be a space where younger India can discover all their prime ministers. It can all be done harmoniously. But you've decided to tie it, and because, as Shiv said, there's been, there's been consistent battles over Nehru's legacy being played out in 2023. Anything that concerns Jawaharlal Nehru gets tangled in politics. And I have a feeling that uh, with nine months to go for the 2024 elections, we're going to see a whole lot more of it. Legacy wars, wars over historical figures, uh, you know, crossfires over the Nehru, Gandhi, the others, both, all the people that Gaurav and uh, Rajdeep have we just We need hit. real issues, Shiv. We the, need to talk about real issues, not about what happened in 1947. Remember, India Today is the only channel that debates all the real issues. Of today, not and, and, but, but, but remember, no, and talk about but, building but remember, it is not us future. debating it. It is yeah, not, sure. this is all happening in the real political battle space at this point of time with elected representatives filling the airwaves with this conversation. It's not us who sparked this no, debate. They tweet, we go to them, we take their bites and by evening... It that, is the, that is democracy. This is a democratic newsroom and that's how it will always be. Remember, India today will always take up the big issues of the country. The only channel that does that. Thanks for watching.